Hey, I'm Rise. So, what makes a Gundam? Well, a Gundam. The prime reason as to why I'm making this video is because I'm pretty tired of whenever a new show is announced, too many people would say the new Gundam design doesn't look like a Gundam. And it honestly baffles me. Because really, what exactly is a Gundam supposed to look like? What is a Gundam? This video will be divided into two parts, the meaning and the designs. One quick note which applies to most titles is that mobile suits given the name Gundam have a high performance. Usually piloted by the protagonist of the show, there are also enemies who would use a Gundam as well. In the Universal Century, the RX-78 would be the first Gundam, a legendary mobile suit which allowed the Federation to win the war against Zeon. The RX-78 was constructed with material known as Luna Titanium Alloy, a lightweight yet durable material which gave the Gundam an upper hand compared to other mobile suits like the Zaku. The mass production GMs would not be constructed with it because of how expensive it would be. Even the Gundam ground types would only have Luna Titanium in the vital regions. With the end of the One Year War, to honor the Gundam, the name of the alloy was changed to Gundarium Alloy. Most mobile suits later in the timeline would be constructed with this costly material. Although not all mobile suits made with this alloy were considered Gundams like the Nemo and the Sazabi, or even mass production mobile suits in F91 because of their smaller size, it wasn't as costly to make them with this material. Other mobile suits which gained this name would simply be because they were made with the alloy and constructed based on the original RX-78. An example would be the GPO series having a similar look to the original. So a mobile suit being named the Gundam you see will come down to the alloy and data used to create them, having direct origins to the original, along with the name and design being used on newer suits as homage to the original because of its achievements. There is a great line when it comes to Gundam types which are not essentially Gundams and are not labeled as such, like the Hiyaku Shiki which was a prototype Zeta. Although in Double Zeta it's part of the group Gundam team, so we could consider it to be an honorary Gundam. In the future century, for the most part there are Gundams all over the place, although there are also regular suits in the show. But the Gundams in this timeline are not mobile suits, they're actually mobile fighters, which are controlled by its pilot via a mobile tray system. There are also acronyms for them which I'm not even going to try and say in one go. Within the After Colony timeline, Gundams gained their name from the alloy used to make them, which is Gundanium Alloy. Although there are exceptions to this such as the Mercurius and Vayette, which do not gain its label. There's also an acronym within Wing. The After War timeline makes it simple, where mobile suits given this name just have a high performance. We don't know the origin of the name or an acronym, which makes sense for X since it's in a post-apocalyptic setting, where they simply just find these mobile suits only knowing their name from the past war. The correct century only has one Gundam, being the Turn A, although not counting the manga adaption, where Corin ends up piloting the Gundam Asculapius from the afterwar timeline in the G Unit side story. As for the origin of its name, it would most likely be attributed to the various Gundams seen in the Dark History. Like X, there is no acronym. The Cosmic Era is just acronyms for days. In it, Gundams are prototype mobile suits, needing powerful operating systems to pilot. The official name of these mobile suits are G-Weapons, although characters like Kira would read out the acronyms as Gundam, and thus more people would do the same. One thing to know is that these prototypes seem to have a knack for getting stolen or are attempted to be stolen. Now Gundam 00 is a bit more strange when it comes to naming things Gundam, particularly because of a little kebab. At first, advanced mobile suits with GN drives were given the name Gundam. This name would already be set for them before their creation by Yolia Shenberg. Throughout the series, more mobile suits with variations of the GN drive would also gain a label as Gundam, usually because they use the same data to create them as the original ones. Although mobile suits like the GNX series would just be considered Gundam types, Setsuna would create a new meaning for what a Gundam could be. Anything which fights in order to eradicate war and bring about peace would be considered a Gundam. This would not just apply to mobile suits, but also to people. Which is when Setsuna would go all over the place saying things like, Gundam. What? What was that? I am a Gundam. That's what I am! What all of us are, we're Gundams. Oh, Setsuna, you special case you. He would also consider mobile suits like the Thrones to be fake Gundams, because their actions were deemed the opposite of eradicating war. Lastly, within the advanced generation, Gundams are high-performance mobile suits modeled after the legendary mobile suit, the Gundam, from the past. The information to create them would be gained through the age device. Now that we're done with how to gain these names, let's talk about designs. Generally, a Gundam would have a distinct design such as a red chin, v-fin, dual eyes, gaps in a faceplate, and of course, variations of blue, white, and some red and yellow in their color schemes. But of course, this doesn't apply to all Gundams, because by these standards, the Zeta Gundam, which is the second title mobile suit, wouldn't be considered a Gundam because of its faceplate and not having a red chin. 
color schemes for these mobile suits would always change, like the Unicorn which is primarily just white, schemes for the wing suits, the below suits, and of course the new Gundam. Even the V-Fin which is usually an iconic symbol for a Gundam isn't always used. The examples I'll use are the EZ-8 and the Victory Hexa. So would you consider these to not be Gundams because they don't have V-Fins? How about the G-Self with its horns facing forward? Back when the show was announced, there were people who were saying it looked nothing like a Gundam because of those horns. But why? It's not even the first to have horns like that. The Testament Gundam from the Cetus Stray series has horns. So, does that mean it's no longer a Gundam? Let's also not forget about the Turn A, replacing the V-Fin with a swagger mustache. How about Dual Eyes? The G-Lucifer from g rec only has a mono eye. But, it's a Gundam. Of course, it also isn't the first, like the Gundams from the game Mono Eye Gundam. Not to mention that the Zeta Gundam once lost its head and was given a temporary Zaku head. So does it mean the Zeta wasn't a Gundam anymore at that point? There are simply just all kinds of designs for a Gundam. Like one out there design would be the one work from Advance of Zeta. How about some iconic looking designs which are not Gundams? In Gundam Katana, there is a Striker Custom. It's an upgraded GM Striker. It may have a head similar to a Gundam, but it isn't a Gundam, it's a GM. In Under the Gundam Double Fake, the D Gundam has a name, but it of course isn't a Gundam, it's a fake Gundam, used to scare enemies with the iconic look. Lastly, the Gaia Gear, it also isn't a Gundam, although granted the mechs in this story are man machines and not mobile suits. Now this is why I find it ridiculous when people would say particular Gundam designs look nothing like a Gundam, because there is no clear way to know what exactly a Gundam should look like, aside from actually being labeled as such by the creator. You don't have to like these designs of course, but not liking them and then saying they look nothing like Gundam is entirely different. How about those angel wings on the Wing Zero AW? They're honestly a bit much, but it isn't any less of a Gundam because of them. To conclude this video, when it comes to what a Gundam design can be, remember that the meaning in its design will change from title to title, like it's always done. The new show coming this October has a Gundam with a new design, and I would really like it if I saw less of the whole, but it doesn't look like a Gundam, and this applies to more titles in the future. As well as, when it comes down to it, it's all on the official creators as to what they label as a Gundam, so respect it. So I hope this was informative for you guys, and thanks for staying this long. And remember, this channel isn't just for show.